Welcome back to the Learn It channel where we are gonna tackle the next tutorial in this series of how to design this shed. And so if you haven't seen the first or second episode, please look at the top right of your screen. I'll post it there in a link and I'll also put it in the description below. Please watch those other tutorials first if you haven't seen them already because if you proceed with this tutorial, uh, you will have missed a lot of different things. We explored so many different techniques so far We've created individual components. We've created sketches and created components from that. We have done a ton of different skills and uh, it's important that you watch those previous tutorials. Important everyone to pay attention to this. I'm gonna be going a little bit faster with this tutorial right now. Uh, you should have the skills needed to catch up with me. If you don't, again, watch the previous two tutorials and uh, hopefully you'll be able to keep up with what I'm about to teach here. So first and foremost, what we're going to do is fix a couple things. And as we've designed our shed properly with the correct workflow, changes can be made very easily. Let's look at one example. Right now, the rafters on our roof, they are spaced 12 inches and they should be spaced 16 inches. So if we activate the roof, we can actually isolate it and there we have it. We can look down in our timeline, look at how simple all of these rafters have been made with very few items in our timeline. We're just gonna go to our rectangular pattern there and our quantity. So here we have it. We're going to go to our quantity. I believe it's gonna be going down to nine. Oh, I'm not sure. Again, we could have done the measurement with this as well. I'm just gonna pick those two, six, 17 inches. No, we're gonna go down to 10 for our quantity right there. So we've got, a, we have a warning here, rigid group. Basically what that's saying is if we go back to our main timeline, we can see that we have gotten rid of some components where we've put them in a rigid group before. And now it's saying, well, I can't find those components, so I'm giving you a warning. Now that's okay. So we should be able to continue without any problem right now. Again, I'm gonna pick those two surfaces right there. The distance in between is 15.83, perfect. So now we can move on. Let us unisolate that. Our roof, is now correct. So let's go back to our main assembly, our master assembly, our top level component, we should say. Now our left wall, we might remember that we copied or mirrored, I should say, our left wall to our right wall. So everything we do in our left wall will be updated automatically to our right. So let's activate, actually, sorry, this is called our right wall, sorry about that. Let's isolate it again in our timeline. This is all we have. And this was a little bit more complicated because we needed to create these angled pieces and it's not easy just to create a rectangular pattern. We have to uh, really do them as individual. So right now we can see because we've created a function for most of these, not all of them, uh, all we have to do is go to 16 inches and let's see this one, we can just update to that dimension. Great, and it's a little bit too far right here. Remember that our piece of plywood will need to span halfway of this uh, two by four. So let's just go a little bit less than that. Let's minus uh, 0.75, then that's gonna be perfect. Again, what we can just do is go to the other dimensions right here and just click them. We should probably just pick actually uh, this one, 274, there we go, we're gonna do that. And let's do our last one here. We don't even need our last two, believe it or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, increase those dimensions way off to the side just so I can see them clearly. And I actually want to delete these now. So let's delete them. There we go, I'm gonna delete those four. So we might get some errors coming up here. We might not, but that's okay. This is part of the fun. Let's finish our sketch. Ah, there we have it. So it's trying to say, well, in the past you could have extruded or you did extrude this uh, and now we can't find it. So that's why it's in yellow. Let's delete it. There we go. We get another rigid group warning. Uh, this should be fine now. So if we go to our master assembly and we unisolate our other wall should be perfect, spanning 16 inches. Now we also have our back wall to do. So again, once we create the proper workflow, once we follow the proper workflow, I should say, changes should be very easy for us. If your entire assembly and entire project is breaking, then you've got a workflow issue. And I highly recommend you go back in time and watch those first two episodes. You will learn a bunch. Now, I'm just looking here. There might be an issue with this 
let's go into, so this is our nailer and the issue is it looks like it's not cutting out into our boards there, into our studs. So I'm going to, again, let's isolate our right wall and we're going to look here to our nailer. Let's hide it and see what we have. Yes, so it's not actually cutting out there. So let's activate right our right wall. And now let's see what we've got here. This is a rigid group before the rigid group. I'm just going to space it there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this nailer and we're going to cut it out of our boards. Now we want to keep the nailer. We want to keep the studs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to combine. Our target body is going to be, well, so I believe we can only pick one target body over here. Yes, we can only pick one. All right, so what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to, what we need to do is, is um, cut these boards out, these studs, I should say, with this guy. And what we need to do is we need to go back in time because we have uh, changed things a little bit here. Now, this is our extrude. Let's make sure that our sketch is turned on and we can hide our bodies as well. We can just select everything and press V to hide them. Okay, so what we're going to need to do, we've got this as a solid piece, that's great. Let's just go back in time there. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude. Yeah, let's do this here. We're gonna take all of those and we are going to bring them in. Now we have to make our other uh, objects visible again. There we go. This is going to be going in minus one and a half the width of our stud and we're going to cut cut everything that it's intersecting right there and go okay. Now when we go back with our timeline it should add the board no problem. The nailer no problem. Excellent. We can go to the rigid group there. Now let's go to our Actual master assembly here, very good. We're going to bring up our other objects there. And let's see here, we've got a rigid group of warning as well, and that's okay. We can, you know what, let's just erase that. Okay, perfect. So now let's see what we've got here. Left wall should be perfect as well. There we have it. So that nailer, all these studs are cut out. All the dimensions look great. Nothing is overlapping improperly. And the last thing we need to do is go back to our back wall over here, our rear wall. We're going to isolate that. We're going to make uh, that active. Again, we select that little bullseye over there and we're going to go to our, our pattern tool. And which one is it? Well, we've only got two on the screen. If we click it on it in our timeline, you can see all of them become active. So we're going to click on that. And here we're going to go to our 10, our quantity of 10. And the, we should get a rigid warning. Oh, so a bunch of errors happened here. And that's because we tried to connect these spacers to something that no longer exists. So we've got a bunch of errors over here. First of all, this copy paste, we can just delete that. Yeah, it's referenced by something else. That's fine, let's delete it. We can delete um, the rigid group as well. Uh, no, see, okay, now things are messing up. We're gonna go to our other joint over here. So basically what happened was I took the last item over here, the last stud, and I copied it over uh, to make uh, the the corner post. Now, what I should have done is I should have taken this stud over here and copied that instead. So why don't we do that now? We're gonna go into our rear wall, pick that stud, there it is on the side. We're going to copy and we're gonna right click paste. There we go, let's bring it on over here. Now we can start uh, joining everything. So I'm just gonna go right there to, and again, click your face and then your point. That's gonna be a whole lot easier to control everything. Now let's move this over one and a half inches. Very good, and we've got our spacers right here. One, two, three, very good. Now let's see, this is a rigid group still. Uh, we should have brought the rigid group off to the end. Oh boy, now everything's moving because 
Hmm. All right. Well, this is okay. This is part of the fun over here. So we've got to figure out where are the joints for those guys right there, these spacers. Hmm. Okay. So I believe it's this right over here. Let's go to our, yeah, those are them right there. And then we go up the wall. Now, these spacers, where are they even located? They're not in. Okay, let's find them in our, here we go, filler block. Okay, I'm just going to delete those. Yeah, let's delete them. It gets rid of all three of them. Perfect. These guys as well. Oh, I see what was going on. Okay, so what we're going to do is select this filler block over there. We're going to copy and we are going to paste new in our rear wall or paste, I should say, not paste new. Paste new is when we want to adjust it later on, but we don't want to adjust these. We want to keep it exactly the same. And now we're going to place this again in the location. So I've made a couple mistakes. I should have copied and patterned uh, parts, uh, other parts or other components, and uh, I didn't make the best decisions with that. And that's okay. That's all right. So now we're going to go to rectangular pattern and we're going to select our components. This spacer or the filler block, I should say, hold down uh, command and pick our other spacer. There we go. Our axis. You can pick it on your origin or anything on your screen. I can just pick it there. Bring up the arrow into location. Very good. And this is going to be minus, and what is it, 76 and a half? No, minus 76. There we go. There's three of them. Boom. There we have it. Now, can we drop these before our rigid group? Uh, we could have. Yeah, so let's do that instead. That's the problem. Okay. Okay, so before the rigid group, now we have to make our rectangular pattern. That's just fun, fun in the sun. And remember, again, if we've created things right the with the correct workflow, things shouldn't be too difficult for us to fix or find the errors. 76 at 3. There we go. Now we're going to go to our rigid group at the very end. Yes, we can make sure everything is selected and we can pick everything in our assembly there under rear wall. There we go. Rear wall has been fixed. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to unisolate and go to the end of our design. Okay, perfect. So we've got these uh, joints as well. Let's just, um, let's just hide them. Those are going to be all right there. Okay, perfect. So now that we fixed everything with our shed and you can see the uh, joists there or the, the rafters, um, they are perfectly in line with our studs. Everything's looking really good. Now we can move on to the next part of our tutorial. So we need to create a component right now. And there's so many different things that we can do. We can create uh, uh, something. We, we're going to create all of the um, the outer workings. We're going to create the, the, the siding. We're going to create the roof. And basically what I want to do is I want to call this, um, let's call it a new component. I'm going to call this siding. Now we've got caps lock on, of course. Oh boy, now what is going on? There we go, siding. Okay, and we're going to design everything. We're gonna add all of the siding to our model so that we can just uh, remove it as we please in the future. So let's start off with um, just one of the walls. We're gonna to go to our, let's go to our right wall. We can turn off the floor. Now we don't wanna copy and paste the floor uh, the flooring over here, the four by eight sheets of plywood, because the size of our wall thickness or the siding thickness for our walls is half an inch. And we also want it to have a different texture. We don't want it to have a wood look. We want to apply an appearance to the siding so that it looks different. We can actually make this look like a shed. So 
There we go. We're going to turn off the uh, floor. And again, at this point, we are going to start with our plywood. Now we can look at our naming convention under floor. We just called it four by eight plywood. Now we're going to call it as well four by eight, but we're going to call it four by eight siding. So let's create another component there. And this is going to be four by eight plywood siding. Great. And we can just create a sketch right away. Actually, you know what? Even better to keep our timeline down to a minimum, we can just go to box. We can just create this in a box right there. And we're going to go 96 by 48. Perfect. And this is going to be half an inch thick. Great. And we can apply a parameter as well. Let's create a new parameter. And this is going to be our siding. Oh boy. Thickness. And we're going to call that half an inch. Okay, let's go back to our box and we can apply that uh, parameter here. We can go to our siding thickness and then we can have full control over it. Perfect, there we go. So now that we have our siding one, we can start joining it. So let's do that. I can just go, let's go this point over here. And here we actually have to turn on the front wall and the rear wall. And we're going to join it right to this corner right there. And of course, we have to rotate this 270 degrees. There we go. And now you can see that it's placed exactly perfectly in line with this middle piece right there. We are going to copy and paste this. Again, we want to keep all the parameters exactly the same. So let's move this on over. We can just move it over 48 uh, inches. We know exactly how much to space it. And then we don't have to apply a joint, but we should do a rigid joint later on. Okay, so if we activate siding, there it is right there. Now, one thing you might notice is that there should be a little cutout right there. So we should. Oh, this is this is too tall, actually. That's right. So it needs to be, the, the plywood siding needs to be hanging down past the floor a little bit. That's for water protection. So how far? Uh, we're going to pick those two, three and a half inches. So let's just do that. We can go back to our um, joint over here. And this is going to be in our timeline. One of the very end uh, commands is going to be our joint. There we have it. And we're just going to drop this down minus three and a half. There we go. Now it's in line with that top. Now we don't need to cut this board. It's going to be a full size sheet of plywood. Very cool. Now let's lay a horizontal piece over here. This is where we grab this plywood. We are going to copy it. And here we're going to go paste new. So it disappears. We're going to go up to move copy, move this out of the way. Okay. Sorry. Let's move this. And we need to move components. That's what's happening here. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now that we've copied and pasted new, it keeps the basic elements of our part uh, of our component, but now we can lay it down and adjust it as needed. So let's do that. We're going to join it here and we can, you know what? There's so many different ways of joining it too. Let's go over here and I guess we should pick this side over here. Yeah, let's just do that. And again, you can have fun with, with um, you know, joining things together. There we go. Pick the face first, and then your snap point will save a world of trouble for you. Let's go. Okay, now we need to cut this out according to our shape over here. And I believe, let's see what we've got here. This is going to go flush with our roof. So let's turn that on and it's going to be cut out perfectly in line with our rafters there. So let's um, let's go into our plywood siding and this is going to be the upper uh, right wall. Yeah, let's just call that. Okay, now we're going to activate that and we're going to create a sketch. 
And you know what, we can do anything we want. Let's create a sketch on that face right there. Don't worry about the orientation. We can always fix it very easily. And then we're gonna go to our ply or to our, our rafter here, and we're just going to press project and cut it out. There we have it. Great, finish the sketch. We're going to extrude that right there, and we're going to extrude it to the other side. It should cut it out. Boom, there's our piece. So let's go back. Now, of course, we're actually going to add just a couple pieces of filler pieces of plywood over here. So let's do that real quick. And we can go to siding and we can go a new component. And this is going to be, uh, uh, let's go a plywood right wall filler rear. Okay, and then we're going to create another one. And this is gonna be our filler front. Okay, great. Let's activate the filler rear there. And what we can do is we can create a sketch right on that piece right there. Now, let's just project that side. We can project that. And now we've got a closed profile right there. That's perfect. I guess I could have done the sketch all in one, but you know what? This is part of the fun. We're just trying to go fast here. We can extend this out the plywood thickness or the siding thickness, I should say. And this is gonna be a new body. Remember, this needs to be active. There we go. We can activate the front and then we're gonna lather, rinse, repeat. We're gonna go create a sketch right on that there. Perfect, project. And we can just project that uh, edge of the, of the rafter. Finish our sketch and we can extrude it. There we go, siding thickness, new body. Perfect, and it will place that body, because we've activated it, it will place that body right there. Okay, excellent. So now we've got our siding, you can activate it all. It all looks really, really, really good. Now what we can do with all of this, um, we don't even need to mirror. These pieces will be exactly the same. So instead of mirroring it, which will create new pieces, um, let's just create uh, copying and pasting. So we're gonna pick all of them just like this. Copy. Oh, before we do that, how about we do... No, no, let's do it. Let's do it like that. Yeah, we're gonna copy all of them. We're going to go copy and then paste. And remember, we want these, this will actually be the same exact shape. We can move them over there and just move it right into position. So what is it supposed to be here? Uh, 144 and a half, I believe. Yes, 144. And we're gonna actually go to our siding thickness right there and it should put it perfectly in place. Great, so this is the whole point is when we create it like this, when we create, when we use copy and paste and copy and paste new uh, properly, when it comes to our drawings, our drawings are going to be so easy to work with just wait and see, it's gonna be awesome. So um, siding is almost done. Let's, uh, you know what we can, uh, we'll just leave it for now. Yeah, let's just hide everything there. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing for the back walls too. So we're gonna grab one of the sidings right there, the pieces of plywood we're going to paste. And of course it's hidden right now, we can make it visible. There we have it. Now let's join it together. Can join that side over there, down there. Remember to move it down three and a half inches. Perfect, Demundo. Excellent. Now, you can see here that we actually need to fix one thing with our rafters, and we can do that in a moment. But let's just, um, now that we have this, we've activated siding, let's do our rectangular pattern. We're gonna pattern. Remember, if we, if sometimes we pick our model and it will pick another component behind it, just pick it in the browser instead. Now we're gonna go down our, what is that, our X axis? Yep, our red axis. And again, we can go quantity of three extent. Let's go spacing minus 48 inches. And those three should be perfect, just like that. Excellent, let's make them all visible. Highlight them, press V. There we have it. So last but not least, we're going to finish up our front of our 
our front wall with our plywood there to our siding. So again, what we're going to do is copy and inside siding, we're going to go paste. Oh no, we want to go paste new. Of course we want to go paste new. So this one, no, we don't want to copy that. So we're going to go copy and paste new because we want to adjust this one. So to move it, we're going to select it in the browser and this is going to be our plywood siding front wall uh, and it doesn't really matter side front wall yeah I don't know all the terminology all the time so we're just going to call it that and we're going to move this on over and remember again we've copied and pasted new to keep all of the fundamental sizing but we also make it so that we can now adjust it so let's put this into location using joints we're going to pick that corner. We're going to move this down to minus three and a half inches. Perfect. And remember, uh, because siding, we can we can place it this way. We can reverse it. We can do whatever. This other side, we don't use mirror. We could use mirror, but it creates an entirely new piece, and it will add that piece to our drawing. We want to just use this and call it in our drawing as two total pieces. Now, in order to do that, we need to cut it out. So. Let's just hide everything else here. We're gonna hide our rear wall, right wall. Don't hide the front wall, hide that, perfect. And now we can cut it out. Make sure to activate our piece that we wanna cut. We're gonna create a sketch on it and we are going to start projecting. So let's project this line and that line. Boom, there we go. And we can further this line down. Let's go from there to there should be black perfect let's finish our sketch and let's extrude this out now that it's a profile so distance to object let's go to the front awesome now fusion is starting to get a little bit slower but look at all of the components that we have i'm running a mac mini right now a 2018 mac mini um, and it's running flawlessly really just a little bit of a hiccup here and there uh, but when ones crash just because they're working on sketches, you know that they've got a workflow issue. So um, look at these tutorials, try and understand the concept of workflow so that your machine can run a lot, uh, a lot faster and a lot better. Okay, so now we're going to copy. And again, since we can flip this piece, we're going to go paste, not paste new. There we go. And we're going to join this to this side now. There we go, let's flip this around. That should be oriented. Oh, that's not oriented correctly. Okay, so I just picked the wrong edge. So we want to pick this side, that's right. Oh boy, now we've gone and done it. Let's do this one more time. Join this edge to that edge right there, or that corner, I should say. Perfect. Now that should line up just right. Excellent. Let's activate siding. Let's make everything else visible. Okay, perfect. So now we need to do a little filler piece right here. Now this is this is where a lot of the fun um, happens. So I'm sorry, I shouldn't have, uh, have made those visible again. We can even hide the front wall. No problem. Let's create another piece of siding. This is going to be a filler piece to span that so we can go, uh, yeah, four by eight foot plywood front wall filler. Okay, and let's just extrude. I'm pretty sure we can just click right on that face. Look at this. And we can pull it. We can go distance to object and just select that. And look what we've got. New body under the filler piece right there. Boom. Okay, this is great. Let's go back to our front wall. We'll make that visible. And let's click siding so we can see it a little bit more clearly. And in this case, I will turn on the roof. There we go. Because our plywood is actually going to go up into the rafters just a little bit. It's gonna snuggle in right there. So how tall do these need, need to go? Well, let's go to this face. And we're going to spin this around and these need to be 38.75 inches tall. 
And you can see here actually that our plywood is gonna be going flush with the side, the inside of our windows. So this is gonna be great. So uh, what was it, 38.75? I really hope so. Uh, we have to measure it again. There we go, and let's click that, 38.75. Okay, perfect. So we're going to select, and we actually have to create three whole new pieces here. They're all gonna be different. So let's go new component, and we're going to four by eight foot plywood, uh, front wall, window, and we're gonna call it, sorry, window one. Great. And we're going to copy this. We're going to create a new component, and this one's going to be called, uh, do you know what? Yeah, let's just start off with window one, and we're going to create it and go from there. So this one is going to be uh, four feet. So let's create another box. We can create it on our XY plane at our origin, and this is going to be 3875 long 48 inches wide and this is going to be our siding thickness just like that now what we can do is let's join this over here and we have to use the right joining location over here so i can let's pick um yeah, let's just pick anything on this side right there. Let's do that. And then I can pick corresponding side right there. Perfect. And now as we flip this, obviously we've done the wrong side. So I can just pick this corner instead. Great. And we can flip this around minus 180. Perfect. So that will rest right in there. Now what we can do, let's place these first and then cut the things out later. So we're going to copy. And again, it's going to be almost the same, slight difference. So we have to go paste new. Let's do one more. We're going to paste new. So we've got three of them. So this is going to be a uh, window two. And this is going, well, let's go. We can even go middle or whatever. There we go. And then we can go uh, window, well, you know what, we should have done this, yeah. Let's just call it left, right. There we have it. Now we can cut the cut out the uh, the shapes of the, uh, or the plywood for the window size. So let's cover, or <laughs> let's hide our roof. There we go. We've got our window left activated. Let's go into create sketch. We're gonna select that right there. And now we're just gonna project the lines that we wanna Make sure we cut it out. There we go, one, two, three. Finish sketch and we can cut out to object to the front. Boom, our first one is done. Let's go to our mid one. And I believe, oh, it cut out all of them. It cut out all of them. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go to objects to cut and instead of cutting all three of them, we're just gonna cut uh, the first one over here. And let's make sure that this is the correct one. Left, yeah, that's the one we wanna just cut. So objects to cut, we only wanna cut that one. Great, we can hide it now. We can select the mid. We are going to move this over and let's just move it out of the way up there. Perfect, we can do the same thing with the window, right? Let's just move it on over there. And now let's start joining it. So we can turn that on and we can connect this however we want. Let's just, um, I don't know, let's do this right here. So I guess I could have done a rectangular pattern and uh, done it that way, um, but this, this way is fun too, yeah. You know what, there's no right or wrong way. There's much better ways um, and I'm trying to teach you those better ways, but you know, this is not the perfect way of doing it. I'm sure that others out there are probably able to find some really good methods. But um, anyway, so now we've picked the mid uh, window piece of plywood there. We're going to create a sketch again right there. P to project. We're going to select all of our inside lines because we want to cut out that. There we go. Finish. Let's extrude it now. And we're going to go to object. Let's go to the front. Boom, last one, our right piece right there. Do the exact same thing. 
We're going to extrude it from the inside. P for project. Pick our inside lines. There we have it. Finish sketch. Extrude. Two object. One, two, three. Let's activate our siding right now. And look what we have. If we turn on all of our siding, I believe we are all done right now. So we can even uh, make the rest of our shed visible. We can activate our master assembly right there. And look at, we have added all of our plywood uh, for the siding. No problem. So this is where we will probably go to siding. We'll hit A for an appearance. Actually, first of all, we want to go right click and we want to go physical material and we want to add pine to it. There we go, pine to everything. But now we don't want it to look like this. We want it to have a nice, um, maybe a painted, a painted surface. So we're going to click on our siding, press A, and we're going to look at paint. We could also look at uh, wood, let's see here, wood, wood solid. And I believe they've got like finished, painted, yeah. But these add a little bit of a wood texture to them, which um, I guess it could be all right, but you know, maybe the grains won't match up the best. So let's just go to paint over here. And we're going to go to, uh, well, let's go to, I guess no option is really good right now. We don't want it to be glossy. Um, enamel, glossy. No, we want it to be matte. Can we just search for a matte finish? I believe we can. There we go. Plastic matte, plastic matte. These are all plastic. So we don't necessarily want plastic, but, um, well, let's go to, let's go back to our painted surfaces then, or painted objects. So glossy, let's just bring in, let's just bring in glossy, glossy gray, and we can apply it to everything. Ah, no, that doesn't look good at all. Let's go glossy white. And we can, instead of dropping it into siding, we can drop it into our gray over there. And now we've got the kind of this uh, white exterior. And of course we can go to edit and we can turn down the reflectance so that it's not so glossy. Let's do that. And we can only see that really in the rendering environment. Perfect, undersiding, we've got all our joints visible right now, so let's hide them. The ones that we can't find easily, just click them and press V and we'll hide those joints. This one too, yeah, we've got a couple different joints down there. Perfect, okay. So this is looking really, really good. Let's do the roof. And uh, just again, show you how easy it is. Now the roof is going to be, I believe, half inch sheeting, sheathing, I should say. And uh, remember our flooring is five eighths. So we don't want to copy and paste. We could copy and paste new, um, but let's see here. Yeah, let's go to the roof. I'm just going to create it in the, the roof section here in our roof component, our roof, our roof assembly. So under that, I'm going to go to, yeah, yeah, you know, we could put it under siding and put everything under siding, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's go to roof here and put it in there. And we're going to go a new component, and this is going to be our roof. Uh, well, four by eight plywood. Uh, sheathing. There we go. And again, we can create just a simple box here and we've got to hide everything else. So we can select that XY plane. Perfect. And this is going to be 48 by 96. Great. And half inch. Very good. And it defaults to the wood texture because uh, we've applied a material. We've applied ply uh, the, the maple plywood or whatever it is to roof. And so it defaults to that as well. So now we can just join this over here. And I believe, let's see. <clears throat> we pick that surface. Is it going to be long enough to span the whole length? No. So I think we actually have to lay it the other way. So that's fine. Let's do that instead. So here we go. We're going to pick that corner and uh, this corner. Okay. And you can see it's laying right down that rafter. So it's perfect to uh, nail it up and everything. Now for the other 
uh, piece of sheathing. Remember, we want kind of, uh, there's going to be three different kinds where we're going to cut the last ones to size. But let's take the sheathing and believe it or not, it should be extended past there just a little bit because we're going to have fascia and everything. So I believe, let's see here. Um, yeah, it needs to extend past that just a wee bit. Let's go back to our master assembly. We're going to go all the way over to that. And we're just going to extend this past there. Uh, one inch should be fine because we're going to have the fascia there. So let's just do that. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Now under here, we're going to copy. We're going to create a new component sheathing and we're going to put a cut piece. There we go. And now this is, this is awesome because we can just go to extrude. We can go to the end of our piece right there of plywood and distance to object all the way over there. It's 48 inches. Now, here's the thing. We have created a relationship. We have taken the edge of this plywood. We've created a relationship between that and gone to an object, which is our last rafter. Now, say in the future, we wanted to change a number of these rafters. This is why we don't do everything within context, because say uh, we've made a mistake and instead of 10 rafters here, we're gonna go down to nine. Well, then it can no longer find the relationship between this and the 10th rafter if the 10th rafter is completely gone. So instead of creating um, two object using in context design all the time, I do prefer to go distance. We know that it's 48 inches. Let's keep it that way. It's one less relationship. It won't mess up on us if we change something in the future. So anyways, I, I prefer that. I hope that makes sense. Now we're going to go back to our sheathing over here. Let's copy. And do you know what? We can pick both of them, actually. Let's go copy. We're going to go paste. Let's bring them up way into the distance there. And now we're going to switch them just a little bit. So we're going to pick, again, pick the face. There we go. So you might uh, have wondered how I'm moving everything so easily. I use a 3D Connection Space Mouse Pro. I highly recommend them. I think they're, they speed up production. Uh, they make everything a lot easier. Um, if you're interested, please see the affiliate link down in the description below. And uh, hopefully if you're interested, you can pick one up. Uh, we get a, just a little bit of, a, of um, oh, see, I placed it in the wrong location. There we go. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, a little bit of a, a commission, but it doesn't add anything to, to the cost of the mouse. Um, the cost remains the same, but we just get a little bit of a commission and uh, that would really help us. It's just one way that you can help us. So great. Last but not least, now we want our plywood to go right to the end point here. And again, we can pick this line and we can hold down our command or control button, and it will tell us we're looking at 16.915. Yeah, let's go. We can just call it that. You know, in real life, we would lay down the plywood. It would be overhanging a little bit, and we would run a circular saw and cut it all off anyways. So uh, we've got cut piece one, cut piece two. Let's create one more, and we can do, we can call this the small cut piece if we want. Doesn't really matter. Um, and believe it or not, why don't we just do this? Why don't we just do this? We're going to pick those two because it's in the same orientation. We're going to go copy, paste, new now. There we go. Sheathing. And this one's going to be our narrow piece. And this is going to be our narrow cut piece. Now, if we've made it this far, everyone, um, if you can like and subscribe, we would really appreciate it. Comment below. It puts it into the algorithm. Um, it, it shares our video with more people. Uh, if you've benefited from anything, if you've learned a new skill, please let us know. We would love to hear about it. Um, if you're interested in buying us a coffee, we would really appreciate that. Um, you know, we're, we're doing these tutorials for the, the benefit of uh, viewers out there. Um, you know, you're getting free plans here pretty well. So, you know, if you, if you send us a little bit of, uh, of, of, um, help along the way, we would really appreciate that. If you wanted to become a YouTube member 
or a Patreon member. That's also another way that you can help. That would just be wonderful. Um, and last but not least, if you wanted to, to um, help us directly or support us directly, go to our website, the link in the description below, and um, you can send us a, a, a direct a way of supporting us using a site called Square, which Google is now going all over to Square. Uh, it's a very reliable company. Uh, do your research before you ever support someone. Uh, see what website you're you're using and things like that, because I don't want anyone to get hurt out there. So uh, and you know taken advantage of uh, materially. But if you do want us to help us that way, that would be just just lovely. Thank you very much for considering. Now again, we've pasted new, so I'm gonna pick these pieces right there. And now what we can do is, in order to um, cut these pieces off, uh, let's think of the easiest way. I'm going to activate it. Let's create a sketch. We're gonna create a sketch. No, not on that side. Let's go back in time. We're gonna create a sketch on our rafter. Okay, and I don't know why. Yeah, let's go to our right-hand side. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is let's just, yeah, I'm going to project this guy and we can create a line from there, completely vertical. And do you know what? Is it even letting me? Yeah, this has to be collinear with that. There we have it. Now we have something to cut it out with and we can do that. We can grab, we can extrude it and we can go all the way distance. There we go, we can go all as a matter of fact, it will cut through everything, cut it, and it will cut those individual pieces, which is really, really, really cool. Okay, so at this point, we have finished the roof. We have finished all of the siding. Um, there is a bunch of other things. Let's just activate our master assembly there to see everything. There are a bunch of things remaining. We've got fascia on the front fascia on the back. We've got our uh, flashing we can put in. We can put our one by twos to offset our fascia as well. Uh, soffit. We would put one by twos under there and soffit underneath. We could even put um, some of our, our building paper on top of our roof and then we've got our asphalt shingles. If you want to see that, uh, please like and subscribe. Please put it in the comments below. Say, yep, please Give us the next tutorial and I'd be happy to make it um, next in the series. If we finish this, to, if we finish these plans, well, the reason why we're doing this is not only to improve our skills, but eventually, uh, hopefully we can finish it with one more tutorial, the rest of all of the, the, the building materials. After that, I'd like to teach you how to do proper drawings so that we can draw this whole shed. We can have master plans. We can have a part list, bring it to our home center, uh, get them to pick up all of our different uh, materials and everything will be ready to go for us. After that, I want to do a render where we'll take this shed and it will assemble itself in a professional looking render with a professional background. If you're interested in that, again, please like and subscribe. We really appreciate your support out there. Thank you again for joining. Check out our official website and thank you for joining the Learn It channel. We can't wait to see you in the next tutorial. Until then, take care and thanks again for joining the Learn It channel.